Thank you, Claire. At this time, we will have Mitchell Hansen to the stage. Mitchell is a second year medical student. Mitchell will present on the topic of how to make your net work, net worth it. Let's welcome Mitchell to the stage. Hi there, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, let me put my best and only good foot forward. Uh, my name is Mitchell Hansen. Uh, I am a second year MD candidate here at the Medical College of Georgia. And today, I want to talk to you about networks. Uh, back when I was a first year student, I went to the organization fair here, kind of where you get oriented with all the clubs on campus. And I happened to meet a girl, let's call her Marissa. Uh, Marissa knew that I was interested in dermatology at the time, and uh, I had a case report for my gap year that I wanted to write up, but I didn't have the skills necessarily to do it. Uh, so later on that week, we ended up meeting. Uh, we ended up talking about uh, her past research experience, uh, her past poster templates, and she knew how to do a literature review. And all that I, I offered in that relationship was the case report itself. I had no skills. Um, I felt like I had nothing that moment, and I didn't really know where the relationship was going to go. Later on that year, um, I ended up finishing a book, like we all do. We put it off for two years, uh, but I finally finished it uh, later that year. It's a book called Social Chemistry. It's by Dr. Marissa King. Uh, she's on faculty with Warren Business School at UPenn, and she actually gave me permission to talk about her book in this talk. Um, but basically, it goes over kind of decoding the patterns of our, net, of our relationships as humans in our networks. And so um, now thinking back on that experience with Marissa now a year ago, I realized I did have something to offer in that moment. It was my network. Uh, Marissa actually now does research and mentors, mentors with my past mentor uh, in my gap year program during my uh, gap year in dermatology. So getting into today's stock, I want to define what networking is. Uh, networking is typically kind of forming relationships for business purposes, for professional advice, uh, kind of to kind of gain or leverage something out of the relationship. But it's actually a word I want to stay away from in today's talk. Uh, typically, people kind of feel almost uncomfortable or almost dirty, uh, as Harvard Business Review uh, kind of has explored the word uh, networking, because it sounds like you're making relationships for an instrumental cause rather than out of just emotion, support, or spontaneity. So the word I want to stick with today is network. Uh, network is simply a collection of lines and dots that are connected. And in, the, in today's talk, I want to think about these dots basically being your friends and acquaintances that you know and love. So how many of these dots can you reasonably maintain as a human? Well. British anthropologist Robin Dunbar explored this by looking at these uh, brains of primates and also their network sizes. And typically that magic number for us human beings is about 150 friends and acquaintances you can reasonably maintain. Now, outside of this 150 and inside this 150 are smaller and larger circles of different degrees of effort that you have to invest into those relationships. And typically numbers, between, uh, numbers of people between these circles kind of goes up and down by a scale of three. And this has also been replicated now in more modern studies with face-to-face -face interactions, phone call records, and Facebook messaging. So how do we have our network set up? Well, Dr. Marissa King actually provides us a few ways of looking at it, and I'll kind of share my little um, ones that I love the most and subscribe to. And necessarily, when, we, when I do talk about these, we all don't have to have an individual one. You can have a mix of different ones because they all provide different benefits. So the first one would be expansionist. Uh, expansionists are those that you would think of that really thrive at a party. They really go around to individual individuals all around the room and they really know how to work the room well. It's because they have a lot of individual relationships. They can do a good job in maintaining those, but the issue is with this network sometimes is that because they have so many individual ones, it can be a lot of effort to maintain those. The next one that I more so subscribe to is brokers. Uh, brokers tend to have different groups of people that either have you know, similar identity or similar ideas. Um, and th the great thing about a broker is that they can kind of leverage the communication between these groups for their benefit and also the benefit of the other two teams. And also they can kind of take ideas from each group and recombine them together to make new ideas. And lastly would be uh, conveners. Uh, conveners are those that think of it like a spider web. A spider web is connected at all sorts of different points, uh, points together to make a very, really strong uh, supportive path. Uh, think about that in regards to people that have all their friends that are friends with one another. Um, basically, it's very good for inner group trust and also identity creation. And the great thing about this type of social network is that you don't have to invest a ton of time and effort into maintaining it because all your friends are kind of doing it for you. So what are the benefits of having a network in the first place? Why does it matter? Well, the first thing would be opportunities. Um, as evidenced by orthopedic match rates for residency, uh, the majority of applicants either match at their home institution or one that they did a rotation away with. And the kind of the clever phrase, better the devil you do know than the one you don't. 
And the other great thing about networks is that they're actually good for your personal health and well-being. Um, it's shown that loneliness actually increases mortality by due to cardiovascular uh, issues with like your vessels and your heart. Um, so actually having a strong network of strong, strong ties can help increase your support and uh, growth-oriented feedback. And then also weak ties actually kind of come into play with the diversifying your resources. So overall, a good network helps increase your self-esteem and support. So I, what I want you to take away from this is just a few key points for us students and young professionals in the room. First would be to ask meaningful questions, not only on a date, but also on like a job interview. Um, it's actually been shown in past studies that when people get to disclose information about themselves, it actually is magnified, the sense of reward is magnified when they're doing it with another human being. So when you are reflective listening, so in the sense of that you're not just waiting when to respond, but you're responding based upon something that they said, it means more to them as the conversation goes on. You affirm their statements. Even saying their name has been shown to show more reward in that. So think about that for your next job interview or first date that you're really wanting to nail. The second thing would be go out there and reach for your opportunities. This would be through cold emailing and cold calling. I know that sounds very, it sounds hard to do. Uh, but uh, as I got to talk to Dr. Michelle Henry recently, she is an eclectic and uh, medical media Mohs surgeon and dermatologist, a field that I want to go into. Um, she said she really appreciates people that go out there and reach for their opportunities because a lot of people don't have it in them to do so. So to make a cold email less cold, I think of it like more like a warm, quick hug rather than like a death grip, uh, to basically go in there in your email and basically identify why you want them specifically to respond to you. Why is it them in the field that you're reaching out to rather than all the other 20 people that you could reach out to? Quickly validate yourself. Give them a reason to respond back to you either with your authority or your expertise. And also make it quick and actionable, that they can do something after it and it doesn't have to be a long convoluted email. And lastly, be appreciative. They probably are going through a lot of other emails and calls, so show warmth and appreciation for them. And then lastly, um, for those that want to be high achievers, try to have certain people in your network. These would be people that give you growth-oriented feedback. They're ones that either have a, uh, authority or power to get you to the next step in your career, and also those that keep, uh, help you with longevity. You want people that want to build you up, help you establish that work-life balance, and help you affirm your identity. So now moving on, that is my TED Talk. These are my references, and I hope you know how to use your networks now. Thank you.